There is no hype for us whatsoever. Hype is something for a supporter. Right? We have our own objectives, our own goals, our own work. Um, we have our own routines, our own patterns. Um, and they're, like, we don't have open training sessions, for example. Uh, the lads go to work every day. Uh, that's it. We just go about our daily lives. And uh, to, to be fair, the supporters have been absolutely fantastic and have given us great space. And I'm sure they will over the next three weeks as well. And this is not to become an issue. It's not an issue. It hasn't been an issue, and that's it. John, does that, does that mean that that's a way for the Limerick fans to show their support? It's by giving you the room to do what they need to do? Hugely, you know, like outside there. Look, that's the supporter's job. What you saw going on there for two hours. They lifted the roof. It was phenomenal. And it lifted our team so much at vital times in the game. It was immense. I can't thank them enough. And I know that they'll do that uh, in the future. And we thank them for it. I'm so appreciative of it. And so are the players. We have huge regard for our support. We just need to be able to go and do our work over the next two weeks. That's all. John, why is this a bigger message than what's after happening out there? It's Shane Dowdy has said it first and you've said it first. Yeah, because... Why would that, you know... Be because... Now, that it does not at all. It doesn't. No, no. No, it doesn't. I'm more than willing and ready to start talking about the game now. Okay, that's all. Um, we needed to make a couple of adjustments and we needed to respond very quickly because the clock was running down. Uh, I suppose, listen, our bench were phenomenal today. Um, when the lads had emptied the tank and were cramping and were getting tired. Um, you know, we had to make changes that were difficult because we had players who played very, very well, but you know, we had to take a gamble that they had probably given their all. And sometimes that's a hard change to make. But um, yeah, we made a few changes. We managed to get a foothold on the cock puck out, I think, at that stage as well. And listen, the boys that went in, they won hard ball, they made hard runs and they took on the shots when they presented themselves and they clawed themselves back down to three and then we clawed ourselves back to level and we got the leading score from the free. We conceded a free there on the far side and fair play to Pat Patrick Horgan, like he's an like, unbelievable free taker and that pressure to, to take that shot and he got it off, it was incredible. It was an incredible game. Um, hats off to both sets of players, I think, you know, they gave it their all. We got a couple of breaks in the injury time, I think, in the extra time. We felt very happy coming into injury time, into extra time because we'd been through it so many times this year, you know, in different games. Tipperary, Clare, in the, in the league, um, the Munster League final, we'd been through it. You know, so we'd been through it a few times and it stood to us that we had the confidence then in the dressing room to refer to those games where we had responded well. And, uh, yeah, I'll shut up now, sorry. I'm yeah, beginning to ramble. Momentum? Yeah. Oh, cute. Massive. Massive. Yeah, absolutely. We were very, very confident in the, in the, in the dressing room. You know, we just needed to get ourselves organised and get out there and get at it, you know. And uh, we got out a bit of an early storm the first maybe five minutes. <clears throat> and then we got into a rhythm and the lads came on and took their chances. And, you know, once the second goal went in in, in injury time or in extra time, you know, we got that seven point lead, I think it was it, six or seven points lead. And, uh, you know, we had, the, we had the capacity then to defend that for the most part for the clock was running down. But just so, so proud of the players, you know, because that five point lead with 10 minutes to go is it's a fair challenge, you know, and they don't leave. Yeah. It was, in, it was incredible, wasn't it? It was just incredible. I don't know how he got around to it and got the touch in the ball. You know, they, they were so fast at getting their shots after they cork, you know. You, the boys found it very difficult with them, you know, they were turning left, turning right and getting the shots off really quickly. Very hard to get a block in, you know, we didn't, we didn't get too many blocks in in the, in the, in the full back line today. Um, we, we would have got a lot in before now, but there's there some set of forwards, the top set of forwards, you know, you have to work really, really hard to get any change off them. John, that, that penalty, uh, there appears to be quick conversations on the sideline, uh, is the instruction to go for goal? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. No, you had to. You have to. You have to go for it. You know? That was it.
And should with Shane Dowling and Aaron Galan in the field, sure, why not? You know, the, Shane is a brilliant ball striker. And one on one with a keeper, I'd fancy him all day long. And he stuck it fantastically. John, uh, Shane says he's giving you something to think about after that performance, right? Yeah. How, yeah. How, um, I think very like our own performances over the last while. Uh, it's all about the response. You know, he could have gone home and uh, held his hand, hid in his hands, and you know, had an issue with it. But instead, he used it very positively and made a massive, massive effort in training. He's been a huge leader within the group over the last month or two, actually, uh, during that period. Great leader today. The way he late in that dressing was just phenomenal. He just refused to leave this ground today without winning. That was, and he was phen phen phenomenal in the dressing. I have to take my head off to him. And uh, he, did it on, he did his stuff on the pitch, and I think there was still a smile on his face regardless, you know, at the end of the day. He knows we're in a, into the last game of the year, and, you know, that's his job. You got three, you got three goals, which probably spurned about five clear goal chances, and that you were already inside the very first there in the first half. And Yeah, sure. Listen, I don't know. Did he drop the hurley or was it taken out of his hand? But he ended up without the hurley quite a few times. Uh, but I won't, I won't say it was taken out of his hand every time because I do think maybe possibly when he was going to catch the ball, he might have actually changed, tried to change hands with the hurley and dropped it in the process. But uh, yeah, listen, he, he did really well today. It was a real menace inside there, I think, all day long. Won a lot of ball. You know, if you create enough of chances, you might get enough of goals, hopefully, you know, and we did eventually. Well, let's, I, I actually haven't been in the dressing room yet, so I don't know what's going on with any of these guys now. So we'll just have to wait a couple of days. We'll give you an update in a couple of days there at some point, OK? Is there an advantage to think that you have a week extra preparation for a time period instead of two? Well, it's up to us to to take that time and use it wisely. You know, we'll take a few days off now, obviously, for the next couple of days. We'll leave the players off anyway. We'll go in and we'll sit down and start planning and uh, getting organised. And there's a lot probably to be done. I haven't been through it before, so I don't know if any presumable there is, but we'll get on with it and uh, we'll give the players a bit of a rest for a couple of days and we'll get them back in next weekend and try and maximise the time that we have. We have to concentrate on ourselves now and that's it. John, you'd mentioned during um, the media briefing there was an awful lot of scenarios and circumstances that you prefer, prepared for and trained for. Was extra time one of those? Um, I suppose our training sessions would be of a similar duration and we might put a particular emphasis on that final 10 minutes for fellas to make that final hard push uh, to kind of prepare for these types of situations. Right, yeah. But I think every, every team that's out there would be probably doing likewise, you know, that's pretty standard fare, so. But we do do that, and I think all the other teams do as well. That'd be kind of neat. And John, um, in terms of Shane Dowling's impact off the bench, he wasn't the only one, he went deep, deep into the bench, as far as I know, David Reedy gets a scoring contribution in his first championship appearance of the season. It's not just lip service <coughs> that you've been talking about in terms of depth of squad. No, I was, I was thrilled for the lads, you know. This, if anything, is a tribute to, to the, the lads on our 36 man panel, what they did today, and the contribution they made when they came on. Barry Nash, Shane, uh, David Reedy, um, William O'Donoghue, probably shouldn't have started naming because I'm going to forget them all, but uh, you know, our AVB games and training over the last couple of weeks, they will testify to them, you know, they've been really, really tight games, and our B team have been putting huge, huge pressure on our A team, and sometimes taking the lead on them, making the lads respond, uh, in kind and that in itself is a great thing because it puts them under ferocious pressure but today they got their day to shine and uh, they took their chance and, and uh, massively proud of the, the effort of the whole panel of 36 players massively proud of it and isn't it great to have an All-Ireland final to look forward to yes absolutely <laughs> you know um, we've worked hard and I think we've earned our place there um, it's up to us now to go in and work hard and get as prepared as we can to be the best team we can be in three weeks' time and see where it takes us.